Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Thursday, March 9th. Tesla has decided to install a dummy camera in its new vehicles equipped with hardware version 4.0. Hardware 4.0 is Tesla's latest suite of sensors and computer that powers its autopilot and full self-driving package features. We've been learning a little bit more gradually in recent months, but this one's kind of amusing at first glance. The front-facing camera apparatus now includes space for a third camera, and in the service manual it states that it is a dummy. And we don't know entirely why Tesla did this, but the software code does have a space for a spare camera programmed in. It could be that Tesla is planning to install a new camera later on, but it's not clear why they decided to put a fake one in in the meantime. Tesla is starting to deliver the first vehicles with hardware 4.0, starting with the new Model S and X vehicles, and then the 3 and Y are expected to follow. Tesla has added a new paint color option called Ultra Red. It's available on the Model S and X vehicles built at the Fremont factory in California. Back in the early days of the Model S, Tesla used to offer a variety of colors, but the automaker decided to streamline the option in order to facilitate production and service. Only late last year, Tesla decided to add two new colors called Quicksilver and Cherry Red, but they were only available on new Model Y vehicles built in Gigafactory Berlin. So now, Tesla has surprised us with a revised color option in the States, and this time it's for the S and X. It actually replaces the old multi-layer red that was previously available. The new Ultra Red is darker and closer to the cherry red that Tesla makes in Berlin, but it looks a little bit lighter than that one. Earlier this week, the Model S and X recently saw an important price reduction of five to ten thousand dollars. So now, this three thousand dollar paint option might be a little more palatable. Nissan says that under its new EV powertrain approach, development and manufacturing costs will be reduced by 30% by the year 2026. Nissan says it has developed a three-in-one powertrain prototype consisting of the electric motor, inverter, and reducer, which it plans to use for its electric vehicles. I have to roll my eyes just a teeny bit when Nissan explains that the powertrain will also be utilized in their hybrid vehicles. Any improvement should be welcomed, as Nissan is reducing the size and weight of the motor to improve performance and diminish noise and vibration. Interestingly, Nissan says it will develop a new electric motor that will trim its heavy rare earth element use to 1% or less of magnet weight. Chinese automaker BYD is launching an electric Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon competitor as part of its new brand of vehicles. The lineup, which is codenamed F-Brand, is launching its first SUV as a direct competitor to the Mercedes G-Class, starting at less than $60,000 later this year. The new off-road electric SUV is almost an exact replica of the Mercedes G-Wagon with a square design and large grille area. It's moves like this that help encourage the stereotype of Chinese companies being copies and replicas of Western designs. This week's episode is sponsored by SAE International, hosts of the WCX World Congress Experience event. For 2023, WCX is set to return to Detroit from April 18th to 20th at Huntington Place. As the largest technical mobility event in North America, WCX brings together thousands of engineers, suppliers, and mobility professionals to exchange ideas, discuss today's challenges, and build powerful relationships to move your career and the industry forward. Join the global mobility community in the Motor City this April to stay up to date on the latest technological advances, participate in roundtable discussions, and network with the brightest minds in the industry. Gain a competitive advantage and meet the people shaping the future of mobility. Visit wcx.sae.org to register now. More details have emerged of the electric mini. The new electric mini will come with a much bigger battery option, more power, and a refreshed design when it hits the streets in 2024. The car will have two battery options, 40 kilowatt hours and 54 kilowatt hours. Those will be a little bit bigger than the outgoing 32.6 kilowatt hour battery. While we don't have an official range yet, we would estimate around 145 and 180 miles of range, respectively. While many declined to show the design of the refreshed Cooper, opting to keep it in the yellow and black camouflage until the full reveal, we actually got to see photos of an uncamouflaged one back in December of 2021. 
Some photos surfaced of a completely uncamouflaged Mini in China. The new Mini is being built in cooperation with Great Wall Motors, a Chinese automaker. Lion Electric filed a civil lawsuit against EV maker Nikola Motors in the U.S. District Court of Arizona on March 2nd. The filing alleges that Nikola tried to steal customers after breaking its battery pack purchase agreement with Lion. Although Lion Electric Designs manufactures assembles many components, including the chassis and battery packs, truck cabins, and bus bodies for their vehicles, it sought a partnership to supply battery packs for its new Lion 8T truck. According to the suit, Lion Electric had a written agreement with a battery company called Romeo Power, and in May of 2022, Romeo Power increased the prices of their batteries 65% over the agreed price ceiling. Things get a little messier after Nikola acquired Romeo just a few months later after the EV maker became concerned over their own battery pack supply. Nikola stated that it would wind down or terminate Romeo's supply agreements with its customers within six months. Lion Electric says the actions have inflicted substantial damages, including the risk of future Lion 8T orders. To make matters worse, Lion is alleging that Nikola tried to steal its existing customers, saying, quote, Nikola contacted Lion's electric customers, telling them of Lion's inability to acquire battery packs for the Lion 8T trucks, which, at set forth above, was a result of Nikola's conduct, and offering to sell them Nikola's electric vehicles in lieu of Lion's. A new camping trailer concept has been released by Airstream, and of all companies, in conjunction with Porsche. The camping trailer concept improves the already impressive aerodynamics of the Airstream with a new rear shape to improve the airflow and a flush underside with reduced drag-creating projections, as they call it. Since this is just a concept, we can't give it too much weight, but the companies did say that it will include integrated rooftop solar panels and lithium battery storage to save energy use for later. Now, whether or not they intend to make this a traction pack for lugging around, we'll have to wait and see. But it would need at least two more wheels to make that happen, so I kind of doubt it. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Alex S360 says, Ah, the Lightship L1, what Aptera should have always been. Well, welcome to the channel, Alex S360. I really don't see the correlation between the Lightship L1 camper trailer and the Aptera hyper-efficient three-wheeled autocycle. Now true, the Aptera is touting the capability to sleep inside the back of it, and they both have batteries and solar panels, but that's really the only thing they have in common. I'm actually a big fan of the Aptera, and I hope they pull through. And this camper trailer seems like a really great idea. I would love to have one of those too. So maybe there's something else they have in common. I wonder if there's anyone out there who would try and tow an L1 camper trailer with an Aptera in the front. Seems quite dangerous to me, but stranger things have happened. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.